cancer and knocked me down, but not out. Now, I'm cancer free. The recovery, it's been tough. I'll need patience, a lot of humor. You only keep talent down for so long. And support from friends and family. Over the last two years, I haven't played much golf, but there's no better place to get back in the game than on 66 courses in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. We're keeping score, but just teeing it up means I've already won. You're not gonna believe where this ball ended up. Join me on my journey to break par. My first stop has taken me south to Wedgefield Country Club. Check out the signature hole at this magnificent property. It's a straightaway par five. But boy, does nature come into play. Native marsh grass on both sides, along a fairway that pinches like an hourglass on the approach. Trees and bunkers tightly guard each side of the green as it opens up to a spectacular Black River backdrop. I'm on the 17th tee here at beautiful Wedgefield Country Club. We are in Georgetown, South Carolina, the bottom farther south end of the Grand Strand. Now the word to describe Wedgefield is majestic. It's an amazing property. I love the live oaks here and I love this 17th par five. That's the Black River off in the distance. Now then, I'm getting all smart folks. Yeah, it could happen. I'm going with the five wood here. And the reason I'm doing that is that penalty area to the right, the penalty area to the left, the bunker on the right, this five wood takes all of that out of play. All right, so the ideal play here is about a three yard right to left draw, starting right center, coming back to center. Or I could peel it a little off to the left. You watch folks, I can make birdie from there. I can make that shot work, maybe. So that five wood is the first shot of the day. I acted like, you know, it was all right, but I think it hurt every bone in my body and it might be stymied behind this tree, but I acted really cool about it. And I gotta tell you, in golf, that's a great tip. When you hit a really bad shot, you just pose like you're on network television and you striped it right down the middle. Try that sometime. If it works, let me know. <laughs> you guys are gonna love this. I got my five iron out, check this out. Well, check this tree out and this thing is incredible, this live oak. But that live oak has given me a cool little gap. You see it right up there? Right in here, I can see a window. I'm gonna take this five iron, I'm gonna hit it right through that gap. I'm gonna hook it about 18 yards and put it back in the fairway short of the green. Bubba Watson, eat your heart out. Back in my stance, close it down a little bit. Keep hooking, baby. Yeah, we might have to look for that one a little bit. When I started talking earlier on this thing, my picture went away on it. Was that that's bad? Okay. Yeah, that's fine, you're fine. I don't know how this thing works. What? I'm just messing with you. <laughs> These camera guys, they don't have a clue. I'm messing with them all the time. It's what I do. <laughs> all right, so I got 92 yards. That's a really good number for me. I'm gonna go with the old 95 here. Excuse me, the 54 degree loft that I hit 95. See, I like living on the edge. This is the way I roll. Y'all watch this, this is gonna be a nasty birdie. Oh, there's mud all over it, did you see that? That ball was giving it a That's what you get for living on the edge, mud on a ball. This is gonna be one nasty birdie. In fact, it's gonna be so nasty, y'all don't even get to see it. How about that view? Hmm. Parr has never hurt anybody. That's what I said Bobby Jones always talked about. You just gotta keep up with old man Parr. But we gonna make some birdies. Parr on the first hole out of the gate. We'll take it. Now let's head up the road for the next one. This hole is beautiful and tough. 
you've got a forced carry off the tee. A big oak tree guards the left side of the fairway, and you've got a bunker right. Several tiers in this green, and it's protected by bunkers, so a birdie here is gonna be a big challenge. Let's see if I'm up to the task. So I'm on the fourth tee here at Heritage Club in beautiful Pauley's Island, South Carolina. Heritage Club is known for a couple things. Number one, it's always in great shape. Number two, the greens here are really challenging. But before we get to the green here at number four, we got to deal with this really tough tee shot. So I'm going to go with my three wood here. And the reason for that is it's a little easier for me to hit a draw. This hole sort of shapes from right to left. And, and I like being able to have the three wood and it also takes that bunker out of play. Come on, draw, baby. That's a six and a half yard draw right there. I measured it. I, I, if you look up on the interwebs, if you Google pure, you ain't have to put golf, just pure, a video of that three wood I just hit will probably pop up under pure, uh, or, or some of my friends call it pur, like tour, tour, PGA tour, PGA tour, pure. See how they rhyme, see what I did there? Anyway, that three wood was really good. All right, so here's the deal. I hit that three wood off the tee. I'm gonna have around 200 yards to the hole. I'm not even worried about where the hole is. This is one of the hardest holes on the golf course. From this far back, I'm just trying to put it middle of the green. I'm gonna take a five iron. I got plenty of room to run it in there. I got some wind swirling around. I'm gonna try and take this one in low. If I can run it into the middle of the green, I'm gonna be a very happy man. Giddy up, baby. Right, friend, see when you hit it that high, that high, wind doesn't, wind doesn't blow that high. You watch this, I'm gonna make the best par you've ever seen. Hardest hole on the golf course, make it look easy. All right, so people ask me all the time, how do you read a green? Imagine there was two or three feet of water on this green and you pull the plug. Which way would it drain? In this case, it's gonna drain over to the left so I'm gonna aim this one a little out to the right. It's all about the water, folks. Oh, I didn't hit it. I'll take that though. I'll take four on four at Heritage every day of the week and twice on Sunday. Even through two, I'm feeling pretty good, and it's only a matter of time before we start putting up some red numbers. This one demands accuracy off the tee. The split fairway's got mounds and pot bunkers, so you gotta choose a side with your second shot. The approach is a forced carry over water to an elevated green. It's big and receptive. Just don't get careless with that front left bunker. It's steep. I'm on the 12th tee here at Founders Club at Pauley's Island. Pauley's Island, that's right, where they make the hammocks. You can bet I'm gonna be taking a nap a little later on this afternoon, but right now I gotta figure out how to tackle this par five. Big wide fairway, giant mounds down the middle of it. You can go right or you can go left. I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm gonna aim right down the middle of those mounds. No way I hit it straight. I'm either gonna be on the right side of them or the left side of them. We'll figure out how to deal with that when we get down there. <laughs> A little right. But we're gonna be good. All right, folks, I gotta tell you, I sliced that about 50 yards, it hit a pine tree. It dropped straight back down. If it hadn't hit that tree, I'd have probably taken out the car on the other side of the houses. That's how bad that shot was. But you know what? I'm gonna recover well. I actually came back, I'm in pretty good shape. No going forward in two though. I got this slice thing working today. I gotta work on that a little bit. I'm gonna stay back on my right side. I'm gonna figure this slice thing out. You watch. All right, here's the deal. I got 150, the 150 marker. I like how they put a stripe pole at the 150 marker. It sort of really helps you 
know how to get around the golf course the first time you play it. I got another 40 yards so I get to the water. I'm gonna go with a seven iron. That ought to get me to where I got about 135 for my next shot. And oh, it's car path only today. This is the way I roll on car path only days. <laughs> Yeah, that'll be pretty good right there. Horrible drive I hit. All right, so I promised 135. I'm a little bit off. I got 133, I'm sorry. That's a good number for me, a little downwind, a wedge. Whole location over there in the front right. Let me see if we can get it all the way to the hole. That's on line, is it up, is it up, go! Stay up, no, don't come back. Whew, that stayed dry. All right, got a little work to do to save the par here. And that was on line. Christian, that's your fault, I'm blaming that on you. It's what you're here for, these video guys. When I hit a bad shot, it's your fault. See, that wasn't my fault. I, I'm playing to a small area there and the wind stopped. I can't control the wind, but I can get this up and down to save par. Pretty lucky it didn't go back in the water. I'm gonna take my 60, try a little, uh, not a flop, but a sort of in the middle. Get some of that. Yeah. You only keep talent down for so long. I can't believe that one didn't go in. Here's the deal, I'm operating on this theory Golf demons live in the ground. And if you move around, they don't have a time to manifest themselves. So play fast. Watch this. I'm not gonna give the golf demons any chance to get into my body because I'm moving around the whole time. See, they couldn't get in there. By the way, that was a pretty cool par right there. All over the place. I'm glad you folks got a chance to see that. That one was fun, even through three. And I'm feeling my rhythm. On to the next one. Risk reward, here we come. If you're long and think you can get home in two, getting it to that peninsula is key for a second shot across the marsh. And pin placement will dictate that second shot. Or you could just play it safe and take the wide route along the left side. Should we go for it or play it safe? Let's find out. So I'm on the 14th tee at Paulie's Plantation Golf and Country Club. This is a Jack Nicklaus design, beautiful par five, downwind today. And in honor of Mr. Nicklaus, I'm gonna go with a three wood off the tee. Arguably, he was the best three wood player, among other things, in the history of the game. This three wood also helps me a little bit, gets a little tight on the right. If I can get this up the left-hand side, I'll be awfully happy. Catch it win. Oh yeah. We cooking with grease now. I was trying to get that one up the left hand side. It went up the right hand side, but I'll take it. All right, so let's see what we got. Uh oh, I got 270 to the hole. Maybe I should have gone with that driver off the tee. It's downwind. I got all this marsh to carry. Ideally, if I can hit up there a little left of the green, I'll have a pretty good shot getting up and down for birdie. I don't know where that one went, but I got all of it. Come on, boys, let's go find that one. All right, so it came up just a little short, but I was pretty happy with that shot. Got a basic little pitch here. I'm feeling some red numbers coming my way. I like that. Find some hole, baby. We got that. I'll tell you one thing that bothers me. Not repairing your ball mark. Folks, you gotta repair your ball mark. I didn't even have to use a tee to get that one. It's like I was never there. <laughs> that puts me in the red. The Golden Bears got me feeling bullish. We love getting birdies on a Nicholas course. Let's keep the momentum going.
Ah, that blue roof. That's a familiar sight. Let's see if we can get there with a birdie on the card. You see what's all the way up the left side, but be careful going right too. If you hit it long downwind, you'll go through the fairway here. And your second shot goes to a green that slopes severely from right to left. We're in Pauley's Island, South Carolina at True Blue Golf Club. I absolutely love this design. Great example of Mike Strantz golf. He always had big wide fairways with a lot of strategy. Now let me show you what we're gonna do here. That's a clubhouse, by the way, they got great breakfast in there. See, there's two chimneys on that clubhouse. One on the left, one on the right. If you hit it the one on the right, you're gonna be absolutely perfect. Look at there, chimney on the right. Chimney on the right. Oh, I pulled that like six inches. Six inches I pulled it. Man, I peered that one right there. I'm glad y'all got a chance to see it. All right, let's see what we got. Just under 140 yards. I was mentioning on the tee that Mike Strantz always has strategy. So I'm close to the water, left edge of the fairway. That was an aggressive tee shot. What that does, it gives me a flatter lie and a much better angle to this green. You got a bunch of room over there to the right, but if you hit to the right, you're gonna have a big side hill lie. So there's always strategy uh, here at True Blue and really any Mike Strantz golf course. Uh-oh, let's gotta get up, get up. Oh, that was perfect all the way. She's dry. This heavy dew will be a good chance to see how much this putt's gonna break. I got it out there about three feet. The dew will tell us if I'm right or wrong. Oh, I did everything but hit it. Look at the little dew track there. We'll have a little track here too. Ah! I hate three putting. See, look at the dude track. Boom, 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 boom. Everything was good. Just didn't hit it. This one right here, I had to start it a cup out on the left. I started at the right edge. That is 100% stink right there. Mark me down for a bogey. Still a beautiful hole though. Mike Strantz kept me honest on this one. Can he do it again next door? You'll want to check out the next episode to find out. this site doesn't get your adrenaline pumping, nothing will. This might be the most iconic finishing hole in Myrtle Beach Golf, and you can see why. Your tee shot here is all about the proper layup position. You don't want to miss the green here because the back porch peanut gallery, yeah, that's right, they're going to make sure you never hear the end of it. Folks, we are in Pauley's Island, South Carolina at the Caledonia Golf and Fish Club and check out this view. My house is about six or seven miles north of here. I'm right on the Waccamaw River, which is just a few hundred yards over there. The sun sets here every afternoon. <laughs> My wife and I call it the show. We absolutely love it. And also love the Caledonia Golf and Fish Club. It is an incredible experience, a, a wonderful assortment of golf holes, just absolutely beautiful. When you come here to play, you just sort of slow down a little bit. Don't be in a hurry, breathe deep. You're gonna have a great day. And how about this finishing hole? Check it out. It plays right into the back porch of the clubhouse. It's, it's one of the coolest finishing holes in golf. All right, I'm going with the five wood. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the five wood. And here's why. This isn't about distance. The closer I can get it to the penalty area on the right, the shorter my second shot's gonna be. We'll get as close to that penalty area as I can without actually going in it. Oh yeah, that's a keeper right there. In the business, we call that a butter cut. So here's the problem. I got 105 yards over water. God, it's just beautiful out here this morning. And I got like all of these wedges and I don't have a single one that goes 105 yards. I either got to hit a hard one of these or an easy one of those. Uh, I'm gonna go with an easy one because it's early and I'm old. Front hole location. I've been told that on occasion, when big groups play out here, 
all the, all the buddies will get up on that porch and maybe enjoy a beverage and do some heckling. Wouldn't that be horrible? <laughs> Hope y'all are rolling on this one. I might make this. Might just make this. Or I could come up short in the front fringe. I'm due to make a long putt. That one makes me mad. I told you I was between clubs. But I'll be all right. I really don't have a club that goes 105 yards. And I really was caught in between clubs. Plus I hit it really thin. Stung my hands. It's hard to be mad long in Caledonia though. All right, so here's what I got. I got putting stroke, putting grip, heel up, toe down. I'm gonna hit on the shiny part out there. See if this will come together for me. Let's see if this will come together for me. Ooh, I thought I made that one. All right, I got a little right to left here. I gotta tell you, right to left is not my favorite. We'll see what we can get. Oh yeah. Four on 18 at Caledonia with this setting. Yeah, that'll work. That's one heck of a one-two Mike Strantz combo we just finished off right there. We're still at even par on the scorecard, but way ahead in satisfaction. You just can't beat this. This is a really nice finishing hole. Dogleg right that demands a well-placed drive because there's water up the left side that's reachable off the tee. And you don't want to miss right because you'll have plenty of trees to contend with. Which way will we go? Let's tee it up and find out. So I'm on the 18th tee at Litchfield Country Club. This was the first golf course in Pawleys Island, South Carolina. And boy, did it open up the floodgates for what's become one heck of a global hotspot for golf. Now this was designed by the legendary Willard Bird. And I'm gonna tell you what, folks, this is an old school, old South, low country gym. So when you're playing golf at Myrtle Beach, always look for those striped poles in the middle of the fairways. That's a 150 marker. I'm gonna go with a three wood here and try and knock that stake, that striped pole out of the ground. Get left, baby. Well, that's not what I was trying to do, but I've got one heck of a recovery game. One of the hard things about coming out here and filming this golf or filming at 66 golf courses, we try to do a lot of it early in the morning just so we're not bothering the golfers or paid customers, the guests that come from all over the world. We got lucky here at Litchfield because we had a gap in play. We don't always have a gap in play. So if you see us out filming, we're gonna get out of your way real quick and sorry to bother you. Do, 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 do. Oh my goodness, look at this one. Oh, you guys are gonna love this one. I love being in the trees. See, I, I drive it real crooked and have since I was a kid. So I'm like 180 yards away. See the flag is right up. There's three pine trees and the flag's right up. You see the flag? Come on, get in on that flag. You see the flag right up in there? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit it up there near that flag because I love shots like this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it a little left of this low tree. I'm gonna take it under that oak to the left of the pond. I'm gonna hit a low slice. It doesn't start slicing until it's gone about 100 yards. You ready for this? You got that camera rolling? All right, here we go. You guys are gonna say, that guy is Houdini. This kind of shot, what it does is it gives me an opportunity to show you how good I am. You ready, right? Okay, we're ready, here we go. 80 yards and then it's gonna start slicing. Well, I didn't get on the green, but I got close enough. Watch this, I'm gonna make me a nice par. I love being in the woods. Almost hit that one perfect. These guys are speechless, they don't know what to say. See, that's the other thing about this challenge, playing these courses. I love that I can play, number one, that's a good thing. But I'm playing by myself, so I gotta to talk to these camera guys. Ooh, I think I saw a coyote. No, it's a golden retriever. I gotta play by myself. 
I need people to listen to my stories. I got all kinds of stories. I'm glad I got this camera going. I mean, you sort of have to listen to my stories on this camera. One little leaf, one little leaf took the spin off this ball. It would have spun right in there. In fact, it might have gone in if it hadn't have been for the one little leaf. But like it is, I get a chance to hit a good little pitch here. Hang on, baby. <laughs> I told you I was gonna make an ugly par. When you hit it in the woods, you gotta be positive. Yeah, dead center, there we go. Told you I'd make par there. I hate right to left putts. <laughs> Into the woods and out of trouble. See how easy that was? Even through seven, time to get great on number eight. Island Green here. This hole isn't that long, but danger lurks if you're not careful. Your best case scenario on a miss hit is to find one of those four bunkers in front. If you go long, left or right, your ball's gonna get wet. But we're not missing this green today. It's pretty big, so let's see what we got. This is the River Club, the beautiful Pauley's Island, South Carolina. We're way down the bottom end of the Grand Strand. And check this hole out. It's an island green. I don't know a whole lot, folks, but I do know this. When you're playing an island green, you don't want to come up short, you don't want to go right, you don't want to go left, and you don't want to go long. Words to Live By by Charlie Reimer. All right, I need to make a birdie. All right, that's a little short, but we can live with that. It's not short in the water, just short of the green. And my putter's hot. It's like me, it's hot. So people are always asking me, Charlie, should I leave the flag in? Should I take it out? Well, I'm gonna leave the flag in here, and here's why. I'm playing by myself, and I'm way too lazy to walk up there and take it out. Hit it, hit it. 300 pounds and can't get it to the hole. That's pitiful. But good enough for a par on the island par three. That's never bad. So I think it's really cool to see an island green. When I was a kid starting like in the second grade, everybody else is you know, learning how to write and all that. I'm like drawing holes on my notebook paper. And this is the kind of hole that you would dream about building or playing. I mean, look at it. It's a darn island green. If you don't like that, you don't like golf. What's not to like about golf on the South Strand? Only a matter of time before we start hitting a string of birdies. Bring on the next one. This is a beautiful par five to help kickstart your round. Water runs all the way up the left-hand side, so don't be surprised to see a gator or two hanging out in there. It's reachable in two with a well-struck drive, so this might be a good chance for me to put a circle on that scorecard. Is it birdie time? Let's give it a shot. We're in Myrtle's Inlet, South Carolina at TPC Myrtle Beach. This golf course was designed by Tom Fazio. It's played host to PGA Tour Champions Tour Championship that was won by Tom Watson. One more name drop for you. The Dustin Johnson Golf School is on the grounds here. It's a heck of a good golf course. The second hole's a really good par five. It's gonna be a three shotter today playing into the wind. All right, let's see what we get. That good is I'm gonna hit it right there. People used to pay big money to see that. All right, I got some options here. I could hit driver off the deck, but I'd probably top that in the water. I could hit a four iron and be smart. <laughs> yeah, if I were smart. I'm gonna hit a three wood up there. If I hit this three wood where I want, we're gonna make an easy birdie. 
Trying to go a little short and right of the green. Let's see what we get. Oh yeah. Left myself a good angle right there. Yes, birdie time. Rock and roll, baby. So let me set this up for you. Kyle, he's not real smart. <laughs> I said, won't you go up there and stand right behind the hole? And he's got this like high visibility orange like beachcomber hat or something on. I'm gonna see if I can knock that hat right off his head. I can't believe he fell for that. I'd normally run this in there low, but I don't think I could get the hat off going in low. So I'm gonna try and take it in high. Let's see what we get here. Oh, he flinched. You see him, he flinched. Well, I missed the hat, but I got that for birdie. <laughs> Can't believe he fell for that. All right, let's see what we got here. Kyle, the reason I hit this over to the left like this, I felt really bad. I thought, man, I might hit him. I'd, I'd hate to do that. That'd make horrible TV. Nice hat, by the way. Man, these greens are nice. You know I'm trying hard, because that time I took a practice stroke. Oh yeah, oh yeah. How does that stop moving? That's uh, somebody else's fault. All right, I got this coming back. Oh yeah. I need to find some birdies somewhere. Every time I come to a TPC course, I remember this story. I played uh, in two players at Sawgrass. And the first time I played there, David Duval and I were good friends. We'd been teammates at Georgia Tech. It was his home course. And he couldn't wait for me to show up at TPC Sawgrass because he had bribed the locker room attendant to put a fake plaque. Instead of Charlie Reimer, here I'm, I'm a rookie, I'm playing in the players. Instead of Charlie Reimer on my locker, it says, you're gonna love this. Welcome fat boy, buffet and back. That's my first experience at a TPC course. And I always remember that when I come here. David Duvall. Hope you like that story because we need to change this one. Car's always good, but we're looking for more. Where we at next? We all enjoy the challenge of an island grain on a par three. Are we gonna like it on a par four? We'll find out as we take on number seven at Tradition. You see, it's a straightaway shot off the tee, no real mysteries here. We just wanna make sure we've left ourselves in the position we like for a high lofted approach that carries the water. Myrtle Beach is made up of about 10 individual communities. Today, we're in Pauly's Island. That's down on the south end. Pauly's is sort of a sleepy feel to it. I like it. A lot of summer relaxing going on down here. Now this is the seventh hole at the tradition. It's a traditional old style southern low country golf course. And this hole, I don't know a lot folks, but this hole has a peninsula green and you better hit it in the fairway. If not, you're gonna make like an eight or a nine or you could even make a 12. Uh-oh, I missed the fairway. I sure hope I don't make a 12. That'd be embarrassing with all these cameras rolling. Man, I thought I was gonna fix that slice. Hadn't played much in this last year and a half. I've been thinking that I'm gonna fix the slice. I guess I'm gonna have to start practicing. Golf's not real easy when you uh, gotta take some time away, especially for being sick. But I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna figure it out. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Oh yeah. Now this one's got my attention. I get a chance for a three pointer here, right between those two pines. I gotta take a little off this. I gotta keep it low, but I gotta make sure I get over the water. I got about 150 yards. Water short, water right, water left. A little water never bothered me. Ha 
<laughs> oh yeah, she's dry. You're not gonna believe where this ball ended up. Woo! That was pretty close right there. That ball is out on the edge of that peninsula. I think it's between the bunker and the water, but I get three points because they hit it right in between those trees. Three points. Yeah, baby. I like living on the edge. How's a ball finish there? That takes a lot of talent. Watch out for the gators. All right, here we go. <laughs> Who said you got to hit the fairway here? You don't have to hit no stinking fairway. Just got to be talented, have a very positive attitude and be sexy. I got all of that covered. That's a pretty interesting par right there. Here we go, boys. Same story here, even through 10. The birdie train's coming. Woo hoo, I can just feel it. Water, water everywhere. Yes, folks, we've got another island green to contend with. But here at Willbrook Six Hole, it's just a short iron off the tee. Just stay out of that left side bunker, and you've got plenty of green and surrounding area to work with. What club should we hit from this distance? If you're a big fan like I am of the South Carolina Low Country, ancient oaks dripping with Spanish moss, black water, ponds, and canals. Occasionally, you got an alligator in there looking warily at you, and these fox squirrels that run around like nuts. Those things, by the way, got a lot more white meat on them than most people think. Well, we've got you covered here at Willbrook Plantation. Check out this six hole, Island Green Par 3. Let's get after it. Okay. Miss the green, but she's dry. What do you see this short game? and it's raining now. It never rains in Myrtle Beach. All right, so check this out. It's an island green, but there's plenty of real estate up here, which is good for me, because I uh, had a little bit of a pull there. But pay attention, folks, I got a tip for you. See how this is a downhill lie? A lot of people struggle with a downhill lie because they try to help the ball up in the air. Get your shoulders parallel to the slope and go with the slope and you'll uh, get better contact from a downhill lie. So I'm gonna get my shoulders going parallel to the slope. It'll come out a little bit lower, which means it'll run a little bit farther, but you'll get better contact when you get those shoulders parallel to the slope. Don't ever try and help it up in there. All right, so here's the deal. Got a little mud on that ball. So everybody says, Putts break towards the water. What are you supposed to do on an island green? Just a little something to think about. Yes, sir! I tell you what, I don't have my A game today, but you know what? No place I'd rather be than on a golf course right here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. No complaints there. Bar is never upsetting to me. We've got a great birdie chance coming up at our next stop. Five Johnston's got some neat little features on this hole. We want to hit our tee shot to the right center of the fairway for the best chance to reach this green in two. There's a lake down the right side that could spell danger to an errant approach, not to mention a little creek that snakes its way between the end of the fairway and the green. I'm in Merle's Inlet, the seafood capital of South Carolina, and I got a tip for you. South Carolina wild caught shrimp, grouper, and flounder. Yeah, you can't go wrong with any of them. And you're on vacation. So have it fried. Enjoy your vacation. 
and enjoy golf here at Watch Us Off Plantation East if you get a chance to play. It's a real beauty. This golf course hosts to the LPGA as seen on Golf Channel. This 17th hole is a par five. It's got a split fairway. I make bogey every time I play this hole. I go for it too, I hit it in a creek. Doesn't work out very good. Maybe today's my lucky day. Bite! Well, I'm not gonna be going from anything. I'm not gonna be going for anything from there. Maybe that's a good break. Every time I play this hole, I drive it like perfect. It's got a really cool green that's raised up with a creek in front, high bunkers. And I get out there and I got like a five wood into it and I hit it right at the flag and it goes in the creek. So today I thought, you know what, I'm gonna slice it off in the woods on the right. And that bad drive, guess what? It's gonna end up leading to a birdie. Oh yeah. I'm not gonna have to worry about going for it today. You see what we got here, good clean lie. Hey, this isn't bad. Keep it down, get it through here. When you're playing off this pine straw, you gotta dig out a place for your feet to go. You play right off the top of it, your feet will slide all over the place. Start it right and hit it over to the fairway. Giddy up, baby. That'll work. All right, let's see what we got. 131, here's the deal. I'm sort of this little grass bunker here. And that is what we call a flyer lie. I'm gonna get some grass and some water to fill up the grooves. It's gonna take the spin off of this ball. A little downwind, so it's gonna play a lot shorter than it normally would. This ball's gonna roll 20, 30 feet when it gets on the green. Sort of curving around left to right, bite. Yeah, that'll be just fine right there. Not bad from a flyer lot of a grass bunker standing on my head. For an old man. See if we can make a 30 footer. I'm betting probably no. Yeah, flyers a lot of times when the ball is sitting in, there's just a little grass. You can tell it's gonna get between club face and the ball, especially a little moisture around. We've had a little bit of rain this morning. That makes it really dangerous. If you make a big full swing with a flyer line, you can uh, break a window in a house past the green. Yeah, I said 30 feet. That was a little closer than 30 feet. I'll tell you one of the things I learned when I was a kid, when you repair ball marks, this ball mark right here, if I don't repair it, it's gonna end up looking brown and nasty. It's no good. You do not want to be the kind of golfer that doesn't repair a ball mark. <laughs> yeah. Everything but hit it. Man, that makes me mad to leave them short. Somebody should give me this one. The only thing that was keeping that ball out of the hole was time. Real exciting stuff watching this old man out here make pars. Maybe we'll get some birdies going soon. Well, we're even through 12. The good news here is you haven't seen my best golf yet. Stick around, folks. sharp dog leg like this one at Blackmore, there's always a temptation to cut the corner with a long drive. I don't think we want to do that here. Pick the right club and take it right down the middle. If we can find anything near the fairway on the left side, we'll be in great position for our approach. I'm here in Merle's Inlet, South Carolina. This golf course, Blackmore, was designed by my pal, Gary Player. Now, last time I was on this property, I was with Mr. Player, I rode the whole golf course with him. 
He is a hot mess, folks. His arms are flapping around. He's jumping out, giving tips, all kinds of stuff. I absolutely love Mr. Player. And here's what he loves about Blackmore. This golf course is very fun and very playable for golfers of all abilities. This 14th hole is a par four. It moves from left to right, a lot of dog legs here, so you gotta do a lot of thinking. I'm gonna go with a five wood. Hopefully I can get it out there where I got a little less than 150 left. Right there, baby. <laughs> You only keep talent down for so long, boys. Riding around with Mr. Player on the golf course. They called me fat about 10 times. He tried to goad me into a diet. A few years back when I turned 50, right before I turned 50, I lost about 70 pounds. I was doing TV every day for Golf Channel. And he actually called me up, gave me a big speech about how cool it was that I lost weight and I looked good and all this sort of stuff, which was awesome. And then I hadn't seen him in a few years. When we came out here to ride this course, he's like, good God, man, what happened to you? <laughs> Looks like you've stepped on an air hose. God, he is a mess, Mr. Player is. All right, it's either 273 or 148. I'm gonna go with a 148. Uh-oh, look out, hole. Be right, big dog. Go in. Boom, boom, is left all the way. <laughs> That's some good caddying right there. I'm glad I went with a 148. Yes, sir. People used to pay big money to see that. <laughs> all right, look at there. I might have my A game today. That's the two best back-to-back -back I've hit in a long time. Let me find my ball mark. Don't forget about those ball marks, folks. Yeah. Why don't you guys get to flag? How do you like them apples, Mr. Player? We're finally back in the red. Time to head up the road to see what the North End has in store for us.